face, how's it going? Welcome to part two of the TMI Mommy Tag. I will have part one and the playlist linked down below so you can check those out. But today I'm doing the 25 other questions. So I'm going to pick back up at number 26. Number 26, were there any complications during labor or your C-section? The only complication I've ever had was when I was in labor with McKinley. If I hadn't pushed her out when I did, they were gonna have to vacuum a sister out because her heart was starting to drop. But that's about the only complication I've ever had. Question 27. Describe seeing your baby for the first time in three words. Best day ever. Question 28. Baby stats. Weight, length, time, and date of birth. Carly Hall, 6 17, 14 at 2.35 a.m. She was 20 and 3 fourths of an inch long and she weighed 7 pounds 12 ounces. McKinley Hall was born 8 11 15 at 3 40 p.m. and she was 21 inches and 7 pounds 5 ounces. Question 29, how long were you in the hospital? Two days, both girls. Question 30, did anyone visit you in the hospital? Uh, with Carly, yes. I had a couple friends and I had some family members that visited me in the hospital. But when I had McKinley, only one person visited me, and that was my mother-in-law. And I actually really liked it. I really liked that um, it was just me and McKinley for the most part. And we got to bond, and we got to have special extra time together. I don't know. I liked having less visitors rather than more, but that's just me. <laughs> Question 31. Was the first day home with your newborn harder or easier than you expected? I would say that my expectations were correct. It was not easy. Uh, Carly had jaundice and I was breastfeeding her. So yeah, Carly was harder than I expected. McKinley, not so much. I figured out the trick to breastfeeding. If my babies have jaundice and that's to schedule feed them until they get over their jaundice and then they'll start demand feeding. So that I wasn't worried about. The day that we got home from the hospital with McKinley, that night, Devin got the stomach virus. And then that next day, I got the stomach virus and that was definitely hard. <laughs> I'm like what three four days postpartum I have a trash can in this hand throwing up and a baby on a boob in this hand it was not fun but after that after we got over the 24 hours of the stomach virus it was actually easier than I thought I didn't um, in my head I thought taking care of two kids 14 months apart was going to be like, oh my gosh, I'm going to have to really learn to juggle. And it was actually a pretty slow, easy transition. I would say that it was easier with McKinley than Carly. Question 32, what was recovery like for you? Honestly, pretty easy. Carly was easy and then McKinley was even easier. <laughs> so I would say pretty easy. I didn't have any problems or anything like that. Question 33, and this is the question that's going to um, take me a little bit. Uh, if you watched part one, you know why. Did you ever experience antenatal slash postpartum depression? Tell your story. Well, I can't tell my whole story because it's it's long. I've tried to record it one time and it was over 20 minutes. So, yeah, it's a, it's a little long. The next time I tell my story, it won't be 20 minutes, hopefully. <laughs> if you guys watched part one, you know that I have another daughter who is older than Carly who will be five next month. Her name is Grace and that's all I'm gonna say. But I didn't even know what antenatal depression was until I was pregnant with Carly and I was asked, did you have antenatal depression? And I was like, I don't know what that is. And she said, it's when you're depressed during your pregnancy. And I was like, oh, then yes. <laughs> yes, um, to summarize it without being too vague, but without going into the whole story either. I got pregnant at 19. The father was supposed to like marry me and we were supposed to like skip off into sunset. That did not happen. He left me instead the day that I told him that I was pregnant. I was depressed my whole pregnancy. And then when I had her, I, it just continued. Um, I had no clue what postpartum depression was or what it felt like. I had no clue what any of that was. So I just thought I was going crazy. And I didn't understand why I felt the same for my own daughter that I felt for my sisters. Like that's not normal. You're supposed to feel a little bit more of love for your child than your sister. It's but, and I didn't feel that. I didn't feel that all encompassing, oh my gosh, I love you so much, I can't stand myself, love. The love that I feel for Carly and McKinley, it just didn't happen for me. I just, I didn't feel it. I told my stepmom my symptoms and instead of telling me, hey, I think you have postpartum depression and getting me help, she just ignored me and she took over my role. And months passed and in June of 2012, I had a suicide attempt. I'm not gonna go into it. But um, luckily I survived and I was misdiagnosed with a personality disorder instead of what I actually had, which was postpartum depression. I was sent to rehab for a couple months, not even a whole couple months. Uh, and when I came back, nothing changed. I still felt the same. 
all the medications that they were trying to give me. Nothing worked. And it wasn't until she was 18 months old that I realized I have postpartum depression. My parents wanted to adopt her, so they did. And when I left my dad's house, everything changed. It was almost instant. I wasn't depressed anymore. I wasn't anything anymore. It was like almost instant relief. And I've never had problems since. All of the depression and all of the anxiety and everything that I was feeling, those 18 months that I dealt with it, it was just gone. I haven't felt any of that since. So I know that I know that it was postpartum depression. I have this peace that I know that I did what was best for her. And ultimately, as a parent, that is your responsibility, first and foremost. Do what is best for your kid, physically, mentally, and emotionally, period. And I just feel like that's what I did. Question 34, did you breastfeed or bottle feed? Your baby, your choice. I breastfed Carly for the first month until her pediatrician was about to diagnose her failure to thrive. And I was like, no, 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 you don't have to do that. And I just formula fed her from then. McKinley, I breastfed her for the first seven and a half months. I had to figure this out on my own because no doctor looked at me and said, hey, um, because your kid has VLCAD, and if you don't know what that is, I will link it down below. My girls have a genetic metabolic disorder. I'll, I'll just link it down below so that you can hear the story from there. But because they have that disorder and because their bodies don't absorb carnitine like it's supposed to, my girls just don't do well exclusively breastfed. McKinley dropped from the 10th to the 3rd percentile in January at her five, and it was, she was about five and a half months, five and a half month appointment. And I was like, okay, uh, <laughs> gonna have to start supplementing. So then I tried to supplement and that became too hard because I didn't know how much to give her or how much not. And it was just easier to transition her straight to formula. So she was formula fed from about seven and a half months on. And with this baby, I'm a lot smarter <laughs> and I'm going to have to get a supplemental nursing system. It's those bottles with the tubes that come out of it that you put in baby's mouth. I'm gonna have to get one of those so that I can both formula and breastfeed because my kids just do not gain weight when they're exclusively breastfed. Question 35, what advice would you give a new mom for dealing with recovery after birth? Pad sickles will save your life if you're a new mom. I didn't have to use those with Carly and McKinley because I just didn't hurt that bad. I mean, it, I was a little sore, but I didn't like hurt hurt. But if you're a new mom, pad sickles will save your life. And dermoplast, that stuff is awesome. Question 36, what's the one baby item you can't live without? And don't do the obvious like crib or diapers. Honestly, with three kids, almost, almost three kids, baby wearing. I need a carrier and I need a good one. <laughs> uh, I'm actually looking into getting a Lilla baby because it's cheaper than a Tula, but I need like a good one. When I had McKinley, I had a Maytai, from the one you can buy at like Walmart or wherever. And when I do get one, I'm going to do a um, review on the Maytai comparing it to the Lilla baby. Whenever that comes in and whenever we do get it, that video will be made. So if you're subscribed to my channel, you'll see the video come up. Question 37, did the number of kids you want change after having your first? How many do you want now or are you done? When I was in high school, I always wanted three kids. I thought that was like the perfect number of kids, three. Now that I'm actually having my third with my husband, um, I don't know. Part of me wants to get tied because I like the number three and I like having three kids, but part of me is like, well, maybe when they're a little older, you'll want one more. I can't have five like my husband wants. <laughs> I cannot have five. I'm sorry, Devin, I, I really am, but I can't have five. That would be technically six pregnancies for me. Oh no, no, I can't, I can't do that. Um, but I might maybe have one more. I really don't know. <laughs> it's something that I don't even wanna think about right now because I'm still trying to get through baby number three. It's just gonna have to be a bridge that we cross when we get there. But it's not taken off the table. We might still have four. I really don't know. Question 38, what's the most rewarding part about being a mom? I'll give a separate answer for each kid because McKinley can't say this. The most rewarding part about being a mom to Carly is when she looks at me and tells me I love you. Oh my gosh, it, just, it melts my heart. Or when she comes up to me and she hugs me. I love my hugs. McKinley can't come up and hug me or tell me that she loves me yet. So with McKinley, it's when somebody else has her and she's just fed up and she doesn't want that person anymore and she wants mommy. <laughs> it's nice knowing that her and I have bonded and that that bond is there. It's like you can physically see it because she wants me. And that's definitely rewarding. Question 39, do you think your kids look like you or dad? Bonus points for pictures. Carly looks like Devin made her all by himself. <laughs> like, I don't know if you guys will be able to see it in the picture I'm about to show you, but if you look right here at her jawline and her chin, 
like her little face shape, it's all Devin. McKinley doesn't really look like anybody. McKinley, I've always thought, looks like her own little person. She doesn't look like me, but she doesn't really look like Devin. She kind of looks like a good mix of both of us. But I will go ahead and show you guys a picture of Devin and Carly just to show you how much she looks like her daddy. Question 40. Do you miss anything from your life before kids? Nope. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. My life was boring before kids. I would not trade motherhood for anything. So, no. Nope. Nothing. Question 41. Let's play pretend. The house is clean. The kids are asleep for the night. You have one hour to yourself. What do you do? Honestly, this is me every night, minus the house being clean, because I have to be on bed rest, so I can't clean my house, and it sucks. It's awful. I hate it. But the girls usually go to bed around 9, 9.30 at night. And for some reason, my body will not let me go to sleep before like 1.30. So I always go to bed somewhere between like 1.30 or 2. And it is not like ideal. <laughs> I wish I could go to bed earlier. I've tried to go to bed earlier. My body will not let me. I will just lay there and toss and turn until 2 o'clock in the morning. Trust me, I've tried it. So after the girls go to bed, I will have a snack or I'll take a bath or I'll watch one of my favorite shows. I do something like that. I'm boring. <laughs> Question 42, tell a funny guess what my kid did story. So one day I was in the bathroom with Carly and I was brushing her teeth and I put the toothpaste on the toothbrush and I gave it to her to see if she would brush her own teeth because we're trying to learn that. And instead she swipe of the toothpaste with her finger and I thought she was gonna like stick it in her mouth or something. Um, no, that's not where it went. It went south. <laughs> and I like freaked out. I was like, oh no, Carly, don't do that. But that's probably one of the funniest things <laughs> she's ever done. Question 43. What is the one thing you never had that you want for your kids? The ability to express themselves. I've always been a sensitive person. I always have been ever since I was a kid. Like when I was a kid, if I started to cry, my parents' favorite thing to tell me was to turn the waterworks off or to basically stop crying. And I can't. I'm 25 years old and I've had 25 years of experience trying to turn off the waterworks. I still can't. I'm just a sensitive person and if I'm going to cry, I'm going to cry. And I've always wanted my kids to have the ability to express themselves and to feel their feelings and it be okay. If you want to cry, Carly, I will be a shoulder for you to cry on. I will help you. I will do whatever it is that you do or do not want me to do in that moment. But you are freely allowed to express yourself. I know that nobody is perfect, no one's the perfect parent, we're all just trying to figure out how to do this the best way we, that we can, but if I give my kids anything, I want them to have the ability to express themselves and not feel like it was wrong for them to feel that way. Question 44, what do you struggle with most about motherhood? To be real honest, probably patience. I try really hard. I try really, really hard to exercise more patience with my kid. And I feel like I'm much better than I was when she was like 18 months and it first started because uh, I've learned a lot and I've read a lot of articles and I've, you know, done some research and educated myself a little bit. But I would have to say when she throws temper tantrums and having the patience to take a deep breath and to help her communicate rather than just get mad at her for throwing it. Question 45, what is the worst children's TV show? Caillou or Yo Gabba Gabba? I can't stand either. Just it grates on my nerves. <laughs> I can't handle. Question 46. How has motherhood changed you as a person? I'm very, very non judgmental. Very. Like, unless you kill people <laughs> or do something really bad, I really don't judge you. If you formula feed, awesome. If you breastfeed, awesome. If you use a stroller, awesome. If you baby wear, awesome cloth, disposable, I really don't care. I do not judge you for your parenting choices at all. As a teenager though, I was not like that. As a teenager, I was so judgy. <laughs> but once you have kids and you're in motherhood, you get judged in motherhood way more than you will ever be judged when you're a teenager in high school. At least when you're a teenager in high school, there's at least a little bit of a, di of a distinction between right and wrong and who's cool and who's not cool and you know. But when you're a mother, everything you do is wrong. Everything. And being in that environment, I guess, has taught me to just not be. The choices you make are the choices that you make and it's what you feel is right for your kid and who am I to tell you different? It's your kid. Question 47. Biggest pet peeve about being a parent? This kind of ties into the last question, I think. Yeah, this kind of ties into the last question and that's when people tell you how to parent your kid. 
please don't do that. <laughs> please do not tell me how to parent my child. I will certainly not tell you how to parent yours. Don't tell me how to parent mine. Question 48, biggest worry about your kid's future. If you're subscribed to my channel, if you're not subscribed, make sure you hit that button. But if you're subscribed to my channel, you know in one of my pregnancy vlogs, which I'm sure is linked down below, that I've talked to you guys about my girls having a genetic metabolic disorder called VLCAD, V-L-C-A-D-D. -D. And I was told by the geneticist, I will never forget this, it was like the first appointment we had with him. He looked at me and he told me, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. Your girls are eventually going to develop a heart problem. We just don't know what it's going to be and we don't know when. It could be 5 years from now, it could be 15 years from now. We really just don't know and it's something that we have to look for. Knowing that eventually my girls are going to have a heart problem that will need fixed, that's definitely my biggest worry about their future. Question 49, if you never had kids, where do you think you'd be right now? Sitting in a fertility clinic trying to have kids. And that's the truth because I just can't imagine my life without my kids. Uh, my life was boring before them and I couldn't imagine what my life would be like without them. And question 50, last question, how would you describe your parenting style? Uh, gentle but firm. I'm still evolving my parenting style and learning different things, but uh, I would say gentle but firm. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, make sure you do so. And make sure you follow all my social media. The links are down below in the description bar. And I will see you guys tomorrow because I am doing a day in the life video. I just don't know when it's going to be uploaded, but it's being filmed tomorrow. So I will see you guys soon. Bye.